and seven-year-old nephew. Hudson's brother-in-law, who was arrested on a parole violation shortly after the killings, had a court date today, and officials revealed a bombshell. With us tonight in New York is Sonny Hostin, who is a legal analyst for CNN's American Morning. Also in New York, Ben Whittacombe, who is the editor-at-large for Star Magazine. Sonny, welcome. Ben, welcome to you as well. William Balfour um, has been behind bars, as we know, for two weeks now, and it was suspected he might have been freed after this court hearing, but now a witness claims that she saw him with a gun, that that gun matched the description of the weapon used in the killings. Showbiz Tonight was right there today outside the Illinois prison where Balfour is being held. Watch this. Our former or current girlfriend of uh, Mr. Balfour, uh, Ms. Shanta um, Captain, has indicated that she had seen Mr. Balfour with a gun uh, that matches the identity of the gun that was found by the Chicago police and other investigators. Sonny Hostin, how serious is this gun claim? It is a bombshell. It's very serious. We already know that the police say that the gun that was found certainly is the gun that was uh, involved in, in the shootings and in, in the murders. And now you have a witness saying, I saw him with that same gun. And we also know that uh, he has indicated that he was at the home that day. The, the, the police officers obviously at this point have linked everything together. And although they're calling him their you know, person of interest, I think there's no question that they think that they have their guy. The fact that they now have eyewitness testimony, not to the murders, Brooke, but definitely to the actual murder weapon, that's it. That's a bombshell, bombshell piece of evidence. I want to say that Balfour did deny those gun allegations. And also, you know, it's been more than two weeks since Hudson learned of these awful killings. Ben, I would have to imagine that this lack of closure with nobody being charged yet has just got to add to her anguish. Brooke, it's just heartbreaking that police haven't been able to push forward this, this case, even to the point of being able to charge someone with the triple homicide. Obviously, William Balfour is innocent until proven guilty, but it's hard to imagine what new evidence could emerge in this case that would exonerate him from suspicion. Now that the uh, smoking gun has almost literally been found, I'm sure Jennifer is praying that this will be the information that breaks the case wide open. Now, Sonny, you have seen these kinds of cases play out before with this new witness and the fact that they have linked a gun to the killings. It sounds to me like you kind of sense that police are close to solving this case, even though, as I want to reiterate, Balfour has been questioned but still not charged with anything in, in, in terms of the killings. Sure. And, and, you know, police officers obviously are being very careful in this investigation and they have to be this is a serious murder uh, case you typically see one murder two murders we're talking about a triple homicide and a young child that was murdered so they are being very careful but i would imagine that at this point an indictment is certainly forthcoming they really probably think that they have their guy maybe closing in on it all right well ever since this tragedy happened other than a few statements from Jennifer Hudson we haven't seen nor heard from her. Ben, do we know anything more about where she is or how she's dealing with all of this? Jennifer has been mourning in Chicago with her sister Julia. Her last appearance was a week ago at a private memorial for her family uh, members in Chicago. She has said very little since uh, the body of her nephew was found. She had been appealing for information about his whereabouts. Uh, since then, she has only said publicly to thank her fans for their support and also to found a charitable foundation, the Hudson King Foundation, uh, to benefit the families of murder victims, which is being administrated out of New York. So she's a appealing for funds for that. You know, and Sonny, this may sound redundant, but uh, we can't stress it enough. Given that police have not charged anybody, although they do have the evidence, the 45 caliber gun used in the killings, um, what does that say to you? To me, again, you know, I, I was a former federal prosecutor. I've tried murder cases. Um, I've dealt with investigators that, and law enforcement officers that are investigating this type of case. Typically in a murder case, Brooke, this is what you want. You want an eyewitness. You want a statement from, from the uh, alleged uh, uh, killer. You also want the smoking gun. You, you want the murder weapon. And certainly you want people placing the person there. And you want com yeah. some sort of forensics. And they seem to have most of that. At this Maybe. point, I think we're going to see an indictment. Maybe they are on their way to solving it, giving the family some closure. Sonny Hostin, thank you so much. Ben Whittacombe, thank you as well. Good to see you.